Hi, hi. My name is Dr. Ida Peterside, and you're welcome to Ministerial Ethics. It's been a while we've done this, uh, but there's been a lot of glamour for people to hear this. And again, we thank God for the grace to be able to teach the Word. For the Bible says it is the entrance of the Word that gives light. It gives understanding to the very simple things of God. We understand by scriptures, and the Bible opens up a lot of things for us, especially for those of us that are in ministry. And there are people in the ministry that have not been taught because it is always difficult to teach ministerial ethics when you are pastoring a particular church and you're pastoring your own pastors because most times when you teach these things, a lot of people think you're teaching out of selfishness or you're teaching because of yourself or because of your ministry and you want to hinder people in ministry. I'm going to say some few things and uh, we hope that you listen by the Spirit of God. You are not watching this program by mistake or by chance. You are watching this program because God has put this program for you to hear. It is like a Bible school. And for, for, for a while, God has been putting pressure on me to teach on ministerial ethics. Because there are people that were not really trained or people that have not received enough training or church members that want to go into a ministry or pastors that are serving in other ministry that want to be in ministry. So, so I'm going to be looking at a lot of things. We've done almost episode six, seven, or eight in ministerial ethics that once in a while we show on our station ATV. Uh, but today I'm going to be looking at something different that has been happening, you know. And, and um, what, this, this will always happen, whether we like it or not, because it is natural for it to happen. But even if it happens, it has to happen in the right way. You know, it is like a, a, a woman that is pregnant, you expect the child to come into the world. Now, but there are other ways that a child can come into the world that is not right, which means somebody committing abortion. Abortion means aborting the child. You bring it into the world, but it is dead. So there are a lot of things that happen in ministry, and people have suffered, and there are repercussions. People have suffered in ministry. Pastors are struggling. A whole lot of things happen in ministry because people refuse to learn, or it has not been taught. Let me read a scripture for you here in Genesis chapter 31. It talks about Jacob and Laban, most of you that are because you're in ministry. And this is ministerial, it is for pastors. And it might not be necessary for you now, but it could be necessary for you later. So I want you to take out your pen. I want you to write. Write like you're in a class. Write like you're in a school. Because if it doesn't happen to you today, it could happen to you five years from now. Okay, Genesis chapter 31 from verse 17. It's a long scripture, but please bear with me. It said, Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon a camel. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padam Aram to, uh, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were his father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syria, in that he told him not that he fled. He left, he fled, but he did not tell him he was leaving. He did not tell him he was running, but he fled. So the Bible says that Jacob fled. Now remember that Jacob has served Laban for more than 14 years. Seven for Leah, seven for Rachel, and the other day. So almost like 20 years he had served um, Laban. But when it was time to leave, he left in a very wrong way. He left in a wrong way. Most people leave ministries in wrong ways. Most pastors break away churches and leave ministries in a very wrong way, which is what we are going to be looking at um, this morning. So verse 21, so, so he fled with all that he had. And he rose up and passed over the river and set his face towards the mountain Gilad. It was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in the night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched the mount in the mount of Gilead. 
And Laban said to Jacob, verse 26, Why hast thou done this, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captive, taken as with the sword? Therefore, why did thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and did not tell me, that I might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, and with tambourines, and with hire? And has not suffered me to kiss my son and my daughter that thou hast done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to hurt thee. Don't forget. He says, it is in the, even though the young man thought he was big enough, he could live. Laban said, it is in the power of my hand to hurt you. But the God of your father spoke unto me yesterday and I say, take heed that thou speak not to Jacob good nor evil. Now, like I said, People will always leave a ministry. And the three reasons why churches break away or pastors break away, I will define it in three ways. Then I will, I will begin to teach you how to leave a ministry. How to leave a ministry. Because, like I said, there's a way to leave. Because you, 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 God has, okay, one of the reasons why people, three reasons why people generally leave, number one, is because there is a major call there is a major call or someone has received an instruction from God. Someone has received an instruction from God. When somebody receives a specific instruction from God, you can't do anything about it. The person needs to leave. The person needs to leave. If the person has I said real instruction, not stories behind the living. An instruction from God. Separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them to do. It is not because you think you've been in a ministry for a long time. It is not because you've been in a ministry and you've not been recognized. It is not because you've been in a ministry and you expect your pastor to post you to another branch. He has not posted you. These are not reasons to leave a ministry. Or because pride has come in. You feel you can do better. You feel you can preach better than your spiritual father or where you're serving and you decide to leave. Or people around you are coming around you like Absalom. They're coming to you and they're beginning to talk to you. We will support you. We will help you. We will be there for you. We will be behind you. And you decide to leave a ministry. That is not how to leave a ministry. I will show you how to leave a ministry. Now, the second reason why many people leave, I said the first one genuinely is that God has given a specific instruction for the person to live. Number two reason is that someone is making a major doctrinal division or somebody is making a doctrinal mistake. Doctrinal mistake. How does doctrinal mistake uh, behave, act? It's like Dr. Ida is a teacher. Because Dr. Ida is a teacher, all he does is teach. Now, you find out that there is another pastor that prophesies. And because the, prof the past pastor prophesies, you decide to leave to that prophetic ministry. Not that God has given instruction to start your own ministry, or God has given instruction on what to do, but because you see that, oh, there's a man, he prophesies, or there's a man, he's into deliverance, or there's a man, he's into healing, let me go there. You just break away, you just leave because you want to go. It doesn't work that way. You don't just leave. Ex Remember the first instruction, I, 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 what I said is that you are going to start your own ministry and there is a specific instruction. Now the instruction could be, go and start me a healing ministry. Go and start me a prophetic ministry. Go and start me, not because you see, you just want to go because... You, you are excited about prophetic ministry or about deliverance ministry or about teaching ministry. You don't go that way. It's a wrong way to go. Third reason why people leave is that someone is making a major moral deviation. It is when the devil puts pressure on you and morally you are not supposed to leave. But because something is not right, Something is not right with you or you are caught committing adultery, fornication, or maybe you are corrected. Maybe you are told to do things in the right way and you decide to leave. It is a wrong way to live. 
When you are in the ministry, you must submit to the authority. You must live a transparent and an honest life. It is not because some people are stealing, you, are not, you steal money or you get involved in a wrong relationship and you are corrected. And you say, who are you to correct me? Who are you to uh, reprimand me? Or they tell you, no, you are doing things in a wrong way. You go late all the time or the assignment they are giving to you, you are not carrying out those assignments. And you get irritated and you get angry and you want to be your own boss and you decide to leave. These are three major reasons people break up ministries. You know, and, I'm, it, now, now, I, and I've given you those reasons why people, but I, I want to teach you this morning or whatever, whatever you are watching us, I, I want to teach you how to live a ministry as a, a subordinate pastor. I'm talking about ministry. I'm not talking about members. Members don't understand that members just go, uh, you know, and I've told people most times when they come, they don't tell you when they go. <laughs> they don't tell you. So we're not talking about the sheep here. We're, we're talking about the shepherds. So this is for ministers. This is for ministries. We're talking about those in ministry, those serving in ministry, those that are, you know, those that are in ministry. Don't jump up one day and disappear. We have seen this happen too many times. You know, and whatever you sow, you will reap. Don't get up and carry your bag. Boom. What, we don't see you. Oh, you are angry with the pastor. Oh, you say the pastor said this. Oh, you say the pastor looked at you in a different way. Or oh, the pastor does not honor you the way you want to be honored. Or oh, the pastor does not give you opportunity to preach. Or oh, the pastor does not uh, um, put you in charge of this department and that department. I'm leaving. I am leaving. No, no, you don't just leave. You don't just leave. So six or seven ways how to leave a minute. Number one, give ample notice of your intention to leave a ministry. If you're a pastor in the ministry, you are serving in the ministry, prayerfully and God has given you an instruction, send a notice and say, sir, I need to talk to you. Or you write a letter if it's difficult to see the man of God. Please, I need to talk to you. Uh, I have this urge that I need to go. And I, I, the way God is now in the month we are in, is that about July, I don't know what month we are in here now. You, you say at the end of the year, in January, I will leave the ministry. And please, I would need your blessing. I would need you to cover me. I would, I'm just coming to let you know, please pray about it too. Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you about it. I had that when I, when I released Pastor Nash in this church. He came to me months ago. He said, I, 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 the Spirit of God, you know, is speaking to me that I need to start something uh, different. And, you know, in three months or in six months, I'm going to leave. It wasn't, like I said, living is not easy. Anybody that tells you it's easy to leave or the pastor will release you easily or you just walk. No, 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 it's not easy. Especially if you're useful in the ministry. People want you to stay. People want you to serve. So it becomes a, a difficult thing to leave. But I'm not talking, listen now, I am not talking about resignation. Any person that signs a resignation letter has a problem. Are, you don't just sign, I resign. Well, you, nobody resigns. You're a son. Nobody resigns from his father's covering. You don't resign. You just come to the man of God and you come and say, uh, you write a letter, you say, and give a notice that you would want to leave, not that you want to resign. Once you resign, there is something not right while you are resigning. So you don't just resign. Nobody, you don't leave a church and resign. It, it, the reason why you are resigned is because something has happened. And if something has happened, there is no way you will live peacefully if you resign. Amen, somebody? You can't just do that. So give a notice and let there be peace. When you give the notice, say, sir, I just came to... And don't go and start telling everybody. Don't let people before the main pastor knows, 10, 50 people in the church already know that you're going. No. It, you, nobody needs to know you are leaving. Go to your father, let him prayerfully, then he will call you. Okay, what are your instructions? And what are your, what are your plans? How do we help you? How do we so? You know, so many people leave and they expect that the pastor that they're leaving will be happy. Or that the pastor that they're leaving will support them. That, no, who will support that kind of thing? You are just, you, no, we will not support you. Because you've already left before you left. You've already gone to the members of the church. Why are you going to them? They are not your sheep. They don't belong to you. 
you are the way you are a son, that's the same way they are sons. The same way everybody's a son. So you you re, you come to the pastor, you write a letter, you make an appointment to see the pastor or the senior pastor of the church, and you tell him and you say, please prayerfully consider. He will say, What are your plans? When are you say, Okay, in six months' time or in three months' time. Don't go and get a hall. Get a room. Get somewhere. Write your ministry name. Put ministry rules. And you and you write a letter. Hey, I'm leaving next week. No, you, you are not a good son. Even the prodigal son came to his father and said, give me what belongs to me. I need to go. Take your time. Give my son, your brother, give my brother, give my sister, give me mine. Let me go. And it was easier when he was about to come back for the man to receive him. Because he left, took his, yes, he took his things that belonged to him. But when he was coming back, he said, the man said, Bring, you are my son. What I have is yours. So it is important that that relationship must, must remain. Number two, if you must resign, if you must leave, leave alone. Did you hear me? If you must leave, leave alone. Anybody that says he wants to live with you, discourage the person. Discourage the person. Again, Pastor Nash did that with me. Two or three people came to his church. He called me and told them to go back. Don't be happy to steal. You are, it's like Laban and Je Jacob and, uh, uh, and the wife stealing from Laban. So Laban said, why are you taking these things from me like a thief? Don't allow people, oh, be, you're excited that they are leaving the church where you were and they are coming to your church and they are calling you daddy. They will do the same thing to you. They will do the same thing to you. And I told, I'm always using Pastor Nash because he's one of my sons that I've released here with a lot of joy and peace in my heart. I've released two or three of them, two with peace or three or in my heart. But he has set a precedent. There are some that left without, now they are like vagabonds. They are walking everywhere. They don't know where they are going. Because the same way you left here, the same way they will leave you. Amen? So go alone. Leave alone. Leave alone. If somebody tells you, oh, we hear you're leaving, say, listen, listen, that's my father. Stay with him. No, 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 stay. Don't come and say, oh, where, which church are you attending now? I am attending Assemblies of God. It's a better place. We close on time. It's a place to be. You'll be happy if you come there. No, you are, you are, you are, you are, I don't know what to say. You, you know, you are not a son. You are not a son. You are not a son if you do that. So when you want to live, live alone. Live alone. If you want to start a ministry, start a ministry far away from your father. Start, you are not in competition with him. So if you want to live, how to live a church, you must live alone. Maybe you take your kindred, your family, take your wife, take your children. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with that. Number three, as you leave, be grateful to the church and to the man of God you are living. Be grateful to the church and the man of God you are living. Most people leave, and as they leave, they begin to curse. They begin to gossip. They begin to talk evil. He did not give me money. He did not release me. He did not do me this. No, you are putting a coal of fire on your head. You must leave blessing the church. When they say, where are you coming from? Say, I'm, I'm coming from Christ Ambassador Church. My goodness, the power of God is there. I learned a lot from there. I, my coverage is my father. My coverage is a great man of God. You see, if you want to see a transparent man, see my father in the Lord. And I'm going to fool after his full step. Amen, somebody. You, you, you attract blessing to your life. You attract blessing to your life. Amen. You are trapped blessing. You, you make sure that you are grateful because where you are, if you were not where you were, you cannot be where you are. If they have not trained you, if they did not give you money or pay you or take care of your family or support you or pay your rent or buy you a car or maybe they've done so many things for you. But when you begin to talk, you talk like, you know that they, were, that like they were giving you poison every day. You don't do that. 
Every time you're living, sing the praise. Look at what Laban said. He said, ah, you came, you took two of my daughters and made you a millionaire. You became rich. Could you not just say, I am living so that I can kiss you and we can have a party? Then I can release you. Amen. That is the right way to do. People are so ungrateful. They don't even remember the sacrifices. And a lot of times they will say, what, what is my contribution to the church? Forget your contribution. You were serving. Because you were serving, you were gaining experience and gaining strength for where you are going. Amen. I hope you are learning this, how, how to live a ministry, how to live a ministry. Uh, I'm not saying God did not call you. I'm not saying you are not anointed. You can even be more anointed than your father in the Lord. But there is a father's blessing. Amen. Say, do not muggle the water as you live. Do, I've already said this. Do not muggle the water as you live. Do not cause issues and problems while you're living. When you need to live, live peacefully. Like I said, you can't just start talking, start disabusing the mind of the people. Because you're a, a son, there are secrets you might have. Amen? There are secrets you might know. You, you remember the, 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 two, the son of uh, saw the nakedness of his father. The Bible says he was laughing and went to his brothers and said, I saw daddy's nakedness and daddy was drunk. When he told two of his sons, the Bible said two of his sons took clothes and they turned their head so that they cannot see their father's nakedness and they came and they covered it. They covered their father's nakedness. When it was time for Lot to die, Lot cursed that son that exposed his nakedness, that spoke about his nakedness, that revealed his secrets. Because once you are closer to the pastor, you are in the ministry, there are things you will know. Some might not be good. Some might be just for the ministry's sake. You understand? You, you, you cannot, you must cover. So you must model the water and begin to stare Hey, why did you leave that church? He said, ah, that pastor was stealing. Just because he wanted to, to pull, and you know he's not a thief. Just because he wanted to pull him down. That pastor is said very hard. He did not take care of us. That's not your responsibility. Most pastors and head pastors lead ministry as grace is provided to them. They might not be as efficient as you. They might not know all that you know. They might not be strong-willed as you are, or they might not be as soft as you are. So the way they treat their ministry, you can learn. And so, okay, when I start my ministry, I will deal this way, I will deal that way, I will deal that way. So you don't leave a muddled water when you leave. Amen. Amen. Now, number, number four, do not start your own ministry in a wrong way. Do not start your own ministry in a wrong way. You cannot start your own ministry in a wrong way. Uh, the Bible talks of a man called Absalom. Absalom wanted to start the kingship in a very wrong way, and he was putting attraction to himself. You cannot be in a church where you are an assistant pastor, or you are, you are a pastor in the church, and you begin to call people, my son, my daughter. She is my daughter. Or you allow people to call you, my father in the Lord. This, no, 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 no. There is only one father in the Lord. You must point, even Jesus. He said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord? There is God, your father. Jesus came as a son, but he pointed to God. He pointed to God. The Bible said the Holy Spirit will come, and the Holy Spirit will point at Jesus. So there is order in the Godhead, from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Bible said the Holy Spirit does not exalt himself. He reveals Jesus. So you cannot be in a ministry and try to begin to say, this person is my son in the Lord. Or when say, ah, my daughter, how are you? Even if you're 100 years. We're not talking about physical. No? We're talking about spiritual matters. In a spiritual organization, there is only one father. It is the head of the ministry. You say, daddy. is the one you call daddy. Or you call, now all of a sudden, all their assistant pastor's wives have been called mommy, 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 mommy. All the assistant pastors have been called daddy, daddy, daddy. No, 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 no. Ministerial ethics, it is wrong. 
and you need to stop it. There is only one daddy, the head of the ministry. So you cannot be, you, you, you do not start your own ministry in a very wrong way. You cannot do that. You can't start, it's a wrong way. You cannot be in, in a ministry and have a ministry. You cannot be saying, my ministry, my ministry. Let us pray, we have a prayer point. My father, uh, my, uh, uh, bless my ministry. No, 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 no. Father, my father, bless my ministry. It's not possible. When you lead prayer, when you are asked to lead prayer, when you are asked to coordinate, every time you coordinate, you coordinate concerning the ministry you are in. Let us pray for our ministry. Let us pray for Christ Ambassador's Church. This is our church. You can't say, Father, bless my ministry. Every power after my ministry, you don't have a ministry. You are under a ministry serving a minister. I'm teaching you ministerial ethics. It is unethical to have ministry in the ministry. Jesus said, as I see my father do, so I do. He said, when you pray, pray. Our father, who art in heaven, but he was on earth there. He was a leader there. But he said, when you pray, say, our father in heaven. He kept pointing to the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. He's not talking about his own kingdom. Amen? It's not talking about his own kingdom. So you cannot have a ministry in the ministry. It is when you are released, Paul and Barnabas, release them to the ministry. You can know that God has called you, but you keep it inside. I've always said the story. I had my friend when I, 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 I was not the pastor that wanted me to come and serve with him. And uh, when he called me, I said, no, sir, I can't. Because I believe God has called me into a ministry. And in a year or so, I'm going to start. I don't want to come to your ministry and start and be supporting you and you begin to say, I, I, have my own, I have my own ministry and I don't want to come to serve under you because I'm about to start my own ministry. And I'm about. He was so appreciated and he became my friend for a very long time that once in a while he will invite me to come and preach in his church. And when I come to preach in his church, I turn all the focus on him. I'm not even telling people I'm about to start my ministry in the next few years. God has spoken. No, it is wrong to do that. It is wrong to do that. Finally, every time you're living in ministry, please avoid being cursed. Avoid being cursed. So many people are under a curse not because it is spoken. Not because it is spoken. How do you know that you're under a curse or something is not right between you and your father? You don't want to see him. You don't want to see him. He doesn't want to see you. He doesn't need to pronounce a cause, but his spirit has rejected you. The same way your spirit has rejected him. But because of the grace he carries, it becomes a problem for you. You don't do that. You don't live with a cause. Every time there is a conference. Your father in the Lord is having a conference. Can you freely come into that church? For you to know you are not on their cause. Can you freely come into that ministry or into that church to say, hey, my father in the Lord is having a ministry or I'm driving past. Let me go and greet my father. If you are not able to do that, change your ways. Go back and repent. Go back and apologize to your father in the Lord or the person that you served, or your mentor. Go back to him and say, I, I, I've not had peace. I, I, the things are not, has not been right in my spirit. Because you will carry a cost. Trust me, whether, you, whether he says it, or he doesn't say it, or when you leave, in the, you leave that church, you say, I don't, have any, I don't want to have anything to do with that ministry anymore. You're under a cost. And the God of that house will fight you. If God really called your father, he will fight you to a standstill. You don't live in that way. Amen. You don't, uh, you don't live, you don't live ministries that when you, and again, how do you know you're under a curse? When you left the ministry, did you destroy it? Did you cause confusion when you left? Did you destroy the ministry? Did you carry people along with you? Was your father and the Lord happy with you? Did you live peacefully? I, like I say, I'm here. My son and the Lord could come in the house. I say, you're doing uh, offering for me today or you're preaching for me today. That's how it should be. Amen. It's like a, 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 like a biological son. 
You know, you're, if you come to your father's house and say, Daddy, hey, I'm not sure I want, to, I want to sleep in the house. Your father will say, your room is there. Or because you, maybe all the children have left. The, a, a father that is well-to-do has, has, has two, three rooms. Say, I am tired. Sometimes your, 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 your wife, you know, or his stepdaughter can go to this father's house and, with the kids and sleep over. Right? Which means there's peace in the house. Or you can come and say, hey, my children, I need to leave them with grandmama. Your ability to come back to the house is a sign that you're not under a curse. I, I, we want to close. I believe this uh, message has blessed you. We need to get it right. Now, if you've done these things that you are not supposed to do, there is no shame. Make peace. Make sure you go back and start a relationship. It doesn't cost you anything. Kill your pride so that it can be done well. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your ministry. God wants to improve you. Don't say, my father and the Lord and me are not talking. No, I don't even have time for you. Most people call me. Once you tell me that, hey, me and my father and Lord, we're not in talking terms. I say, please go away. Because if you do it there, you will do it here. And we believe that this has blessed you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Again, my name is Dr. Ida Peter Said. If you need counseling, you need somebody to talk to, we've opened our offices. We say every Thursday, as God gives us grace, we'll be meeting with two or three pastors, one-on-one, -on -one, to advise you, give you direction. Be it family problem, marital problem, or ministerial problem, we'll be there to help you. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for that man of God and that woman of God. I pray that you help them. You, they are hearing what they are hearing because you want them to hear it. And I ask that the God of this house, the God that I saw, that has given me grace, will rest upon you. Do you good and do you well. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.